In this video, I'll show you how to use pivot tables in Excel to perform database functions like summarizing counts of records with a particular attribute. Pivot tables are an extremely handy way to turn qualitative records into quantitative information for visualization. They essentially work by allowing you to flip a table so that columns are summarized as rows and information in each row is counted or otherwise summarized to provide an aggregate statistic. So to get started, all I'm going to do is take this enormous table, which lists individual records for students studying in Middlebury schools abroad or on campus or in any other Middlebury location, and I'm going to select all of it because we want to include all of this information in our pivot table, and we'll use the pivot table to aggregate it and count the number of students that are studying in each location. So I'm going to hit Control A to select the entire table, and then I'm going to come up to the Insert tab, and I'm using Excel 2007 for this, but you can do the same thing in Excel 2003. And in the Insert tab, over on the far left is a button for Pivot Table, so I'm going to click that. I've already selected a range of data, so I'll go with that range that I've already selected, but you could use an external source. And I'm going to create a new worksheet for my Pivot Table. I'll click OK. So here's my new Pivot Table worksheet. You can see it's labeled down here on a tab. And here are the variables that Excel has identified based on my field names in my previous table. So I can aggregate my information based on term, the ID number of students, the gender of the students, the graduation year, the program, the study location, the study city, study country, study abroad duration, their address, their zip code, and their home state. And then when I populate this table with a few of these attributes, it'll give me a summary of my data in the middle here. So in order to populate it, I'm just going to start dragging some of these variables down into these fields here. You can see we can drag attributes into the column labels, into the row labels, and then into the summation of values in the middle of the table. So in my rows, I'd like to put my study cities. So I'm going to drag study cities down. Now this study cities attribute is in my row labels, and you can see over in the table that it's listing each one of the study cities in this table. Now the most basic table I can do would just be to count the number of individual student IDs within each of these study cities. So I'm just going to take this ID field and drag it down into values. And you can see right now it's just giving me a sum of the IDs. But I don't want to treat these IDs as numbers, I want to treat them as unique identifiers and I want to count the number that are associated with each of these study cities. So I'm going to click on this little down arrow here and you can't see it because it's off the page. So I'm going to try to shrink that up. And now you can see way down at the bottom is a value field settings. So I'll click on that. And in there, I can change this from sum to count. I'll do that and hit OK. And now you can see the total count of the ID numbers associated with each of these areas. Now this is still potentially a little misleading because there are doubles of some ID numbers. So if a student studied in Middlebury, Vermont during more than one term, then they would be double counted. So ideally, you'd have to do some pre-processing on this information to exclude the doubles before you made your pivot table. I can also add multiple columns to this pivot table. So say that I wanted to break this out by graduation year, I could just drag graduation year into the column labels, and now I've got my table broken out by graduation year. Now not all of the IDs have a graduation year associated with them, so you can see here that there's a blank column, and there are quite a few IDs that fit into that blank column. But we can see that the bulk of the IDs that we're working with here fit into this graduation year 2011 slot. We could also break out the table even further by another variable, let's say home state, so we could drag that into column labels, and it's going to tell me that there's just going to be too many columns on here to fit in my sheet, so do you want to show as much as possible? I'll say OK. And now you can see that it's given me a column for each state for each year. It's first breaking it out by year and then breaking it out by state, and so here we have 2010 for each one of these states. You can see there's one person who is from Florida that's graduating in 2010 that went to Berlin. We can scroll all the way over, we can see a 2010 total, and then here's 2011 for each one of those states. Most of the students are in there. Here's 2012 for each one of those states, etc. If we decided that we didn't really need to break it out that far, we could just remove graduation year from that. I'm going to click on the little down arrow and then say remove field, and now it's just breaking it out by states. So we can see that we have a number of students from California, a number of students from Colorado and Connecticut, and we could very easily take this information and go make a map with it. Now to get this information out of a pivot table and into just a regular Excel sheet so that you can then bring it into ArcMap to make a map with it, I would suggest either coming up here to the upper left hand corner and clicking on that button so it'll select all your information, or of course you can hit Control A to select all of your cells. And then you just need to copy that information. So in the Home tab here, you just need to hit Copy. And then if we come down here to the Tabs and insert a new worksheet, we'll hit OK. 
then you can paste, and if you click on the little down arrow underneath paste here, you can say paste values. And what that will do is it will remove this from the pivot table structure, though there will no longer be a behind the scenes pivot table working here. You're just pasting the values of that pivot table. And that way you'll have complete control over this worksheet. You can do things like delete these header rows. If I right click over here in the rows and just hit delete, then it'll remove those rows. And then generally clean this up so that you can bring it into ArcMap and use it as the basis for a map.